we have been at war for 17 years. I think about this every day. That's increasingly uncommon for most people in America. My name is Rita Hicks. I'm a wife, mom, attorney, civic leader, and I'm a military spouse. It's through the lens of military spouse that I'm here to talk to you today about one of the most seismic cultural shifts that's taken place in our country in the last half century. And that's the distinct disconnect between America and its military. My husband Jake served in the United States Army for 22 years. I joined him at year 13, and I have been a military family's advocate ever since. Uh, I continue that work today through an organization called Military Family Advisory Network, where we connect military families and veterans with the nonprofit services and resources that they need. Everything from resources for their kids, resources for their health, for their careers, really you name it. And I love being an advocate for military families. I grew up in a family that was very connected to the military. I have a great grandfather who served in World War II, a grandfather who served in Vietnam, an uncle who was in the Air Force, an aunt who was in the Navy, I have a cousin who's a Marine. I mean, military really was all around me. But I had no idea what life was like for military families until I married a soldier. That's when I felt it for the first time, this otherness, this sort of disconnect. I had never noticed it before. And as I think back over the stories that my great-grandfather told me about small town West Texas in World War II, what I realize is that that disconnect has not always been there. If you think about uh, back to when the days following the bomb, uh, <laughs> if you think back to the days following the bombing of Pearl Harbor, our entire nation mobilized. Remember the phrase, the war effort? Either you were a soldier, nurse, or humanitarian on the front line, or you were hard at work in the factories making the things that were needed on the front, or you were buying up bonds to fund the war effort. Rosie the Riveter was the icon of this era, and she reminded everyone that everybody needed to do their part. We can do it, right? At the end of World War II, one in 12 Americans were serving in the United States military. Everyone knew someone who was a soldier. War affected everyone, so everyone felt compelled to help. And taking care of military families was just par for the course, because odds were you knew a military family, and if they needed help, you just helped. But things have changed dramatically since then for a couple of reasons. The first one is just technology. Advances in our military technologies have made it easier to fight wars with fewer people. Uh, think about drones, for example. So at the height of World War II, there were 12 million people serving in the United States military. That's the combined population of Los Angeles and New York. Today, there are about 2.2 million people serving across all branches of active duty guard and reserve. That's smaller than the population of Houston. In fact, it is less than one half of 1% of our entire population. It's about 1 in 200. 1 in 12, 1 in 200. The other major change that has taken place is that after Vietnam, we created an all-volunteer force. For four decades now, over four decades now, Americans have been raising their hands to serve. So generations of people like me have never had to worry about the draft because somebody, in fact, millions of somebodies, have raised their hands to go in our place. And that is really something. But it's also something that bears looking at. Because you see, an unintended side effect of that all-volunteer force has been the development of a divide, a distinction between people who have served and people who have not. We have also seen military service concentrate in ways that we did not expect. Military service has become a legacy with sons and daughters following their parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles into service, sort of like a family business. Uh, in fact, in 2011, Pew Research Center found that 80% of veterans have an immediate family member who served. That's 20% higher than Americans in general. So family connection impacts military service. 
We've also seen military service concentrate in specific parts of the country. In 2016, the Department of Defense uh, reported that 44% of our military comes from southern states. But only 36% of the total population of the United States comes from those same states. So it used to be the case that Americans everywhere were taking care of military families because they were also everywhere. But today, we often don't know where they are or what they need. It's easy to forget that we have been at war for 17 years when, for most of us, war does not affect our everyday lives. The concentration of military service into specific ge geographies and specific families, coupled with the smaller size of our military, has resulted in that disconnect that I mentioned before. It's sometimes referred to as the warrior class, where we honor our soldiers and we laud military service, but the actual experience of being a soldier or a soldier's family is a step removed from the life experience of most people. So we may put our hands over our hearts at a baseball game. We may say thank you for your service to a soldier when we see them in uniform, but we may also have absolutely no idea what life is like for them. So I would like to share for you just a few things that you might not know about what life is like for military families. A sort of snapshot of the home front, if you will. A 2017 study by, National military Family, by Military Family Advisory Network found that one in six veteran and military uh, <laughs> A 2017 national survey by Military Family Advisory Network found that as many as one in six veteran and military families struggle to put food on the table. Unemployment among military spouses is four times that of their civilian counterparts. 28%. That's because military life often involves frequent moves, which can be major barriers to career continuity. And Blue Star families reported that tens of thousands of military kids are, are growing up without a parent for months and years at a time. In fact, 32% of military families have reported that since 9-11, they have spent more than four years apart. My personal experience is commonplace. In the five years that my eight-year-old was an active duty military kid, he spent a Christmas, three birthdays, and four Halloweens without his dad. My husband has caught a lot of his son's first son video, not in real time. Just think about this. In 17 years of war, we have seen an entire generation of military kids grow up in a world where saying goodbye and sending parents off to war is a regular occurrence. It's tough. Military families sacrifice a lot. But, there's a but. Good news. Another side of the story. Because the research is also clear about one thing. And that's that for most military families that are thriving while they are serving, it is because they live in civilian communities that embrace them. That's right. We make the difference. And it makes sense, right? We all do better in communities that care and embrace us as people, regardless of what it is that our spouse does for a living. Like all who serve, whether it's military or teachers or public safety or public service, we empower those who are serving our nation when we are serving them. So helping is easy, and anyone can do it. We are, <laughs> helping is easy, and anyone can do it. And it starts with something, <laughs> we are America at its best when everyone hears the call to serve. Most of us are among the 99.5% not currently serving in our armed forces. But that doesn't mean we can't mobilize. Everything that we do for a military family, for a soldier, increases that soldier's readiness. And that soldier's readiness has a direct impact on our safety and security at home. Helping is easy. Anyone can do it. And it starts with something really simple. Get to know people who serve. 
as people. Then you'll see how you can help. Here are just a few ways. Are you an employer? Hire a military spouse. That, odds are that person will only be able to work for you for a couple of years before they have to move. But during that time, you have an incredible employee, and that military family has an additional income. Be that person who goes out of their way to help new families get used to learn the ropes in your neighborhood and get used to the way it works and feel at home. And you don't have to live anywhere near a military installation to do this because recruiters, reservists, and veterans live in every community in this country. Offer to be a child care resource for a military family. Or be that teacher that takes the time to understand the military kids in your classroom and the additional resources that they might need when a parent is deployed or when a parent is transitioning out of the military, which can also be really tough. Volunteer at local organizations like your VA, your VFW, or your USO. Talk to veteran and military families, and you may hear the call to action in their stories. Or just be. Offer a, wine, a glass of wine and a listening ear at the end of a really hard day for a spouse. I'll tell you, I weathered a 10-month deployment with a three-year-old. Try explaining 300 days to a kid that can't count to 10. I'll tell you 100%. Sometimes just knowing someone was there made all the difference. Anytime there's any kind of natural disaster or other emergency in this country, we are a nation that is quick and generous in our response. In those moments, we hear the call. And the only relevant question is, how can I help? That's when we see our nation at its best. Our military families, our soldiers, they're serving us every day. And we're at war now. And it may not look the same as it did before, but the war effort still takes everyone. Military families need us to be asking the only relevant question, how can I help? So let's be our nation at its best. Let's hear the call. And let's serve military families together. <laughs>